good evening everyone today i will speak on gender in international relation with a little bit of media perspective this will be my opinion and how i see gender from international relation perspective and from media perspective so let's begin gender in international relation is understood by feminist perspective i call myself a feminist but then there are my friends who sometimes argue that i am being influenced by popular women celebrities who would say and do whatever they wish to do and misuse their power of being a woman and get their way some of my friends say being a feminist is like a woman is trying to be like a man where women is trying to present themselves rough and tough just as men supposed to behave like and then there are my pro feminist friends who would say men must suffer then only years of subjugation of women will be equal well the last one is a joke but we keep discussing such stuff i have seen many women celebrities who had written i am not a feminist anti feminist etc on their twitter bio during the peak of hashtag me too movement but i never really understood why they would write that because if you are not a feminist and do not understand the years of exploitation and brainwashing by society then they must keep their twitter bio blank or instead they must write i am not patriarchal but then they will say we do not call ourselves a feminist because they think women are just playing the victim feminism says women are weak feminist hate men feminism means rejecting traditional gender roles and i think these are misconception of feminism and that's when you know they are not anti feminist but they are either from a very privileged background or have not understood what feminism means because one way or the other they are promoting feminism yes feminism is about equality and i understand equality what it means and i wish for equality for all genders but that's what the definition of feminism is but then the argument comes then a feminist must fight for equality and not feminism but if that was so easy women would never have raised their voice and asked for equality in the name of feminism yes men kept making laws saying equality for all but women were never uh, given importance and were always neglected feminism exists because of history because of the exploitation because of first second third fourth wave of feminism and i do not know how many waves until we see a tsunami before understanding women in international relation i thought it is better to discuss the misconception of feminism that is why i'm sharing my personal experience about gender identities i thought i had only pink and blue as my friends but little did i know i had whole rainbow in my group gender is not a binary concept that is either male or female but there are 72 verified gender categories and these 72 types are very complex and interrelated it includes gender types such as a gender who do not identify themselves with any gender by gender having two gender identities at the same time or different times omni gender where one experiences all gender etc therefore the aim of the 72 definition of gender identity is to make everyone feel comfortable in their skin irrespective of what gender they were assigned at birth it is not about boy and girl anymore but it is more about i think how femininity is being suppressed in both women and men because men do not feel comfortable to show emotion while women understand that showing anger is not a feminine characteristic these characteristics of both masculinity and femininity must be balanced as per individual's comfort and not dictated by the society and that is why we must see the structure of any institution including home office school or at international level with a gender sensitive lens it took me by surprise when i was taught gender in international relation i was feeling happy that it is being discussed but it was hard pill to swallow because at what level gender is being discussed i thought women are not equal in their own home how they will be equal in international relation it is like saying i will climb the mount everest before i could climb on any small hill initially it felt like top to bottom approach but then i realized women are everywhere and injustice is everywhere so it is both 
top to bottom and bottom to up approach trying to come at equilibrium so here i have tried to make tables on feminist theories which includes their idea their aim and their perspective on international relation so let's understand each of these theories step by step first one is liberal feminist they believe that women's equality can be achieved by removing legal obstacles that deny women the same opportunities as men uh, these include reproductive rights abortion access right to voting education fair compensation for work affordable child care and highlighting the frequency of sexual and domestic uh, violence against women etc Uh, their view on international relation is that they question how world politics has been affected by absence of women rape and war and how inequalities continue to exist even after formal equality second is post liberal feminist um they view they argue the binary thinking of gender they want to emphasize on unequal gendered structure in order to understand women's subordination their aim is to destabilize the patriarchal norms entrenched in society that they have led to gender inequality uh, they say wo- world politics must be understood not only by discussing women but must be understood by gender sensitive lens the third theory is feminist critical theory according to feminist critical theories uh, they show how both the ideas and material structure shape people's life and how changes in the meaning of gender that have changed the practices of international organization over time their aim is to understand how gender is constituted by the meanings given to that reality that is how men and women have different ideas about their relationship that is uh, what is already accepted and what characteristics are accepted by women and men which changes everything that is Uh, they want to change the mindset of how women are taught to be submissive home oriented and are considered easily influenced while men are seen as dominant worldly and are logical they are very sophisticated therefore men can handle international relations better than women that's what they are arguing fourth is feminist social constructivism according to them they show the various ways in which ideas about gender shape and are shaped by global politics um, they say that home based work which is done by women majority of women is considered not real work they aim to regulate home based work as it is what majority of women do and that must be recognized their view on international relation is how the gender norms and identities are constructed contested and reconstructed in history the problems of women can only be solved from women's point of view the fifth type of feminist theory is post structural feminist they claim that there is a link between knowledge and power since men have generally seen as knowers and as subject of knowledge their aim is to use gender sensitive language in media other institutions to break stereotypes of men are all knowers and women as subject of knowledge even religious texts are written by male perspective which makes them more powerful in history and society in general their aim is to understand um, international relation by changing the perspective by wearing gender sensitive lens uh, the sixth one is post colonial feminist they suggest that women subordination must be differently understood in terms of race class and geographical location and uh, the aim is to understand women subordination within one's own cultural context rather than universally understanding of women needs different uh, location and different place and different culture have different needs so post colonial uh, feminists are trying to be more specific about what is right for women living in different parts of the world on their view the on on their view on international relation is the portrayal of women living in the east that is third world countries are considered as poor undereducated victimized which is not fair uh, western models of uh, feminism is not useful to understand the whole world now let's understand myth of protection in history in media in society we all are programmed to think that men are protectors and women and children need protection 
throughout history men fight was to protect women and children but on the other hand 90% of civilian casualty in contemporary wars prove the myth of protection during war time women are forced into refugee camp and they are systematically raped as part of military strategy for example in the case of bosnia and herzegovina where almost 20000 to 35000 women were raped as policy of ethnic cleansing even in media we see movies and television shows that portray how we can helpless women are they always need men to save their life the target audience of these erotic movies are mostly children where they learn who is helpless and who is the hero which is the reason why gender inequalities are ingrained in the minds of children and later in life it is difficult to change their perspective it is not limited to the movies and shows but when i think about the image of women in international politics portrayed by media i mostly see how fashionable and privileged these women are they will wear versace gucci designer dress etc silk sarees in india and all luxury brands if we notice or not because media will make sure that we notice they are in front cover of fashion magazine more than political magazines which creates a problem i understand that fashion is very powerful language to express oneself as a politician because you have to maintain an image but on the other hand men are shown as busy and serious people making policies while women politicians are portrayed more for fashion than real work they do even in newsrooms women anchor must be good looking comfortable wearing tight clothes to attract the male gaze for trp sake is not doing justice firstly women politician who are serious about their work secondly the woman anchor who is brainwashed to be more attractive to get the job rather than skill and knowledge and finally viewers as well on the bright side we have enough knowledge about inequality to achieve equality things are changing this year india has 1020 female per 1000 male probably beti bachao beti padhao abhiyan is getting successful after all or is it parents who are still trying to get that one male child for legacy and end up getting five girls and youngest son is that the situation i am not sure but women are understanding their worth they are working in ngos to improve their lives for example dawn there is development alternatives with women for a new era which was established in august 1984 in bangalore where women from various countries came together to discuss political strategies theories and research on social economic and politics at international level also seva that is self employed women's association which was established in 1972 in ahmedabad by ella bhat to achieve rights of self employed home based women workers and later seva expanded and started seva bank that helped women financially their efforts resulted in international labor association to protect home based workers rights also the effort of united nation for improving the condition of women and spreading the awareness for equality since 1975 after organizing the world conference on women in Me- mexico city to till today making plans to recover from current covid crisis with feminist and sustainable approach women have left their workspace to take care of their family women have contributed majorly and are contributing during this difficult time of pandemic as doctor as nurse as a teacher as a mother as a wife and as daughter and as a woman in society therefore if we were taught that men are for war then women are for peace it is their thinking if women men are made for war then women are made for peace and international relation aims for peace and soft power that is why women are needed at international level but there are still challenges still only 23% of women are there in global politics and indian government has only 33% of seats reserved for women as much as women are needed at home women are needed at policy making because we all are capable and we all want to grow and learn from each other it is not about representation of women in politics 
but it is about women really getting involved in the discussion an environment needs to be created where everyone feels safe to speak their mind and this is can be done by wearing the gender sensitive lens thank you for watching the video i hope that my perspective on gender at international relation level and from a media perspective helped you to open new doors and ideas how you see the world and it's that's all for today thank you